Hey everyone, my name is Paul and today I'm reviewing a tool. This is the eDiag YA-101 scan tool. If the check engine light is on in your car, you need a scan tool to read the codes and find out what's wrong. eDiag was nice enough to send me this unit to test. This is a pretty basic scan tool, so it's small. It's very easy to use, but they include a quick start guide in case you're new to scanning your car. It's just a box with a cable attached. Build quality seems good. That's all you need. This is my 1997 Toyota RAV4. This car is always broken. The check engine light is on. Today that's good news because I can test this scan tool. The OBD2 port is usually under the dashboard on the driver's side of the car. Just plug the scan tool in right here. It takes just a couple seconds to start up and we're ready to go. Let's hit OK to go into diagnostic mode. It takes a while to connect to the car. This isn't the scan tool's fault. Remember, my car is from 1997. The car's computer is slow and that's why it's taking so long. Okay, and here it says the MIL status is on. MIL means malfunction indicator light. Most people call it a check engine light. Same thing. Let's read the codes. I have a P0130 and P0133. They're both for the oxygen sensor bank one, sensor one. It's a little hard to see the screen right now, but that's just my camera. The display on this scan tool is very bright and you can see it just fine in real life. If I check the pending codes, I get the same thing. The codes are saying the computer isn't getting the right signal from the upstream oxygen sensor. The freeze frame is useful because it gives you data from all the sensors the moment the check engine light came on. This can help you replicate the problem or test the car under the same conditions after you fix it. The oxygen sensors are located on the front of the engine in my RAV4. The one on top is the upstream O2 sensor. It might be a bad sensor, but keep in mind the scan tool is the first step of diagnosis and doesn't always give you the answer. I could also have a loose connector or some bad wiring. The eDiag YA-101 can also give you live data from all the sensors. My engine RPM is zero. Now let's start the engine and you can see all the numbers changing. The code was for O2, bank one, sensor one. Here it is. The sensor is sitting close to zero volts and doesn't work. Let's not jump to conclusions though. Oxygen sensors need to warm up first. A low voltage is actually normal when you first start the engine. I let the engine idle for three minutes and now you can see the voltage is changing twice per second and goes up when you rev the engine. This is good. According to this live data, my sensor works just fine. It's possible my sensor will fail soon, but at the moment it seems to work, so I'll erase the codes for now. It's telling me to turn the engine off and just have the key in the on position with the engine not running. Okay, now I can clear the codes. Just to check that it worked, I'll read the codes. And there are no codes stored in the computer. Let's start the engine. And now you can see the check engine light is also off in the dashboard. Let's see what else this tool has. Vehicle info? It's telling me to turn the engine off. Okay, and it doesn't know what kind of car it is. My car is from 1997. It's not fancy like that. Let's go back. I can do a voltage test, 12.5 volts. That's nice. You can also look up trouble codes. I'll go into generic OBD2 and enter P0130 from earlier, and it gives you a description of the code. You can also set a different language for your scan tool. You can change the units. There's a data logging feature and a self-test so you can diagnose your diagnosing tool. Excellent. That was my 1997 Toyota RAV4. Now let's try the tool on a newer car. This is my 2017 Hyundai Tucson. The OBD2 port is also under the dash in this car, just in a slightly different place. Okay, let's start the engine. And unlike the RAV4, this car is not broken. The check engine light is off. I'll read the codes. And there are no codes. Let's see if this vehicle info works on this car. All right, there's all kinds of information in here. Since there's nothing wrong with this car, I'll have to break it to make the check engine light turn on. Just kidding about the hammer. I'll unplug the sensor on the intake manifold instead. Let's start it back up and that check engine light is on now. ECM stands for engine control module. Let's see what the codes say. I have a P0108. The manifold absolute pressure sensor isn't working. I also have a P0113, intake air temperature sensor high. High means the resistance is high. High resistance means it's hard for electricity to go through the sensor. Indeed, it would be hard for the electricity since that thing is unplugged. Let's go through the live data. Here you can see the manifold absolute pressure doesn't change even when I rev the engine. Scroll down and the intake air temperature is stuck at negative 40 degrees. 
That was fun. Now I'll fix my car. Let's erase the codes. It says the codes have not been erased because the conditions have not been met. What does that mean? The check engine light is off now and there are no stored or pending codes. Now P0108 and P0113 are saved as permanent codes. That sounds bad, but it just means you have to complete a drive cycle for the computer to test the sensor. Once I drive the car, the computer will realize that my manifold absolute pressure and intake air temperature sensors work, and it will delete those permanent codes. This is a really good scan tool. You can read and erase codes, as well as look at freeze frame and live data to help diagnose your car. And you can't beat the price. This would make a great addition to your toolbox, and I like it.